Hi everyone, welcome to the review for section one. In section one, we created our stamina system, our sprint system, both of which are on display on screen now, our hunger system, which you can see ticking down, and our health system. We've also created a true first person camera and use interfaces to communicate between the player and our widget. So let's take a look at what we've done. Let's first open our player character up. And in here we have set our default movement speed so that when we change or if we change our characters in the character movement uh, components, default max walk speed, we will always have a sprint speed that is double that. We'll always have a reference to what that value should be. Um, wow, I have a lot of things open still. I'm just gonna close everything now to the right of that. And so we, now we, we're storing this information. After that, we have our debug to see what sort of controller we're using or to set, in this case, our controller. We then can set our inverse values based on the type of controller. Do remember there are challenges that I've given you related to some of this stuff. So bear that in mind as we go through this. And let's take a look. We're not gonna go down through the rest of the event begin play. We're gonna just jump down to our movement events. We took what we already had from Epic in terms of our getting our vectors, because that's actually probably the only real way to do it for this, and made it a little bit cleaner by collapsing it to a function. In other words, we did nothing but just make it a function. We did, however, make a move forward function where we, based on the type of controller, change how the input works. And we did the same for move right. Literally, it's exactly the same. I could have just duplicated this node down here and plugged it in and it would work perfectly fine. So, yeah. Bear that in mind. What makes these different is the vectors that are being passed in. The world direction is what really makes these two different. And yeah, because you can pass it in to, it, it doesn't, yeah. Uh, again, that was more of a, a challenge for you to work with. Then we have our lookup. And again, based on our controller type, while we are doing exactly the same, it is something useful to have in there. Uh, you could use a select node instead as a test or you could just make this a single sort of input. But we have a lookup that works for both mouse and controller now. And then we have a turn where we allow inverting on our controller, but we don't allow inverting on our um, keyboard and mouse. So that's why this is actually different. So we have that set up. Let's go back up to our begin play. And then we have timers for our two core systems of uh, stamina and hunger. And if we go over here, we have a stamina system where we check if the character is in sprint mode, so if they're holding shift or have hit caps lock, and they are not stationary. So in other words, they're moving. So this is a not equals vector. So it's number not equals exclamation mark, equal sign and vector. And we have the not equal vector. Um, we're not using the not exactly one. We're just using the not equal. That way we get the tolerance. And then we're checking if they have stamina. If one of these is false, and it doesn't matter what order you plug these in, by the way, it can be in any order, um, just as long as all three are plugged in. If one of these is false, this entire statement returns a false and we go to our stamina regen. So we'll go to our stamina regen in a minute because we have other calls to it. If all of these are true, then we start depleting stamina. We check, does the character have enough stamina to actually do our running? Because that's what's really we're checking here. We'll also do one for jumping as well. Uh, but that will be down the road when we get to the end of the series and we're doing our final bits of balancing. If we do have enough, and again, they're running, then we deplete their stamina and trigger our UI alert. If they don't have enough, we check, are they always sprinting? If they are, we turn off the always sprint, which I forgot to show us when we talked about the sprint stuff earlier. So we'll go back to that. If they're not, remember they're already sprinting. We already know they're sprinting, but they're not always sprinting, meaning they're holding the shift key down instead of using the flip-flop. And in that case, we just default them back to walking. We override the shift key. And then we trigger our stamina regen. So how does our stamina regen work? Well, we check, and again, it doesn't matter what order these are plugged into, if they are starving, or sorry, if they're not starving, because if they're starving, then we don't regen stamina ever. If they're not starving and if their stamina is less than their max possible stamina. If both are true, in other words, you've also fallen out of this and or this, 
then we regen our stamina and we reduce the alert. Again, in terms of polymorphism, these are literally the same functions. You could just call the trigger stamina alert twice. Let's go look at the sprint real quick, because I skipped that. Our sprint system. Well, right now we're only really checking do they have stamina. We will be adding something into this related to our inventory system. That's going to be our encumbrance part of our inventory system. So if we hold shift down and we have stamina, and right now this is automatically true, so it will return true if this is true. Then we set our sprinting state, in which case we set is sprinting and we up our max walk speed to our sprint speed. Again, think about the challenge I gave you for making this a polymorphic function. So you only have one instead of two. When we release the shift, or if we don't meet these conditions while holding shift, then we go to the set is walking, which turns off our is sprinting and sets our max walk speed back to that default walk speed. Our always sprinting works on a flip-flop. So every time a flip-flop is activated is a little counter. First time it's A, second time it's B, third time it's A, fourth time it's B. It doesn't matter what activates the flip-flop. It will always work in, it always keeps track of its own activation, not what is activating it. So if we hold caps lock or hit caps lock once, we turn on the always is sprinting, set is sprinting. We hit caps lock again, we turn it off and we set is walking. Now, if we run out of stamina and we have always sprinting on, then the abort sprint fires. This will not fire unless we have always sprinting as true, which means we've hit the caps lock enough times that A has activated. And A is the active branch. So abort sprint will always go through that B branch. And that is just simply due to the check right here of is always sprinting. All right, and then we have our hunger system. We check if the character is starving. If they are not starving, then we decrease their hunger, which means we decrease the hunger statistic. In reality, what we're doing is increasing the hunger itself. If they are starving, so, which is meaning they have a hunger value less than one. Because remember, if it's greater than or equal to one, they're not starving. If it's less than this, they are starving. I actually had to pause the recording to double check my, my logic until I realized the name there says not starving. So if they are starving, in other words, they have a value of 0.99 or less, then we go to the starving route, which depletes stamina faster and causes them to take damage when they eat, which is a system we'll actually fully implement, which is why I have the space down here in section two when we do our inventory, then, ooh, ooh, I, I did something bad here. There we go. Uh, then we have a pause check. We pause our timer. We re-trigger this based on how many times they eat and then unpause the timer when that delay is finally done. All right, our UI is always a mess. I always hate opening these things up. And then that happens, and I hate it even more. So we have our stamina alert, which just create our damage alert, which just increases the opacity each time we take damage. So if we're taking damage over and over and over again, it will get a darker and darker red. When we increase our damage, we start a timer that decreases the opacity. Now we could be a little bit more safe about this and actually check: is this already active? And I'm going to show you how to do that in section three of this series when we get to our flashlight. So I'm gonna come back here and actually update this during section three. The timer reduces that redness, so it lowers the opacity. It's actually not becoming redder and redder, it's just becoming more opaque. And then if we heal the character completely, when we take damage, we set the uh, health bar visible because it defaults out as not visible. We then, when we're completely healed, the bar becomes invisible. And the same works for our stamina, except for we clamp our value at 0.8 so we don't go completely black. All right, that said, oh, and this is the interface for our progress bars. I'm not gonna cover how progress bars work. It has a min, it has a max. It's dividing by 100, or sorry, it's dividing the min by the max and dividing by 100 by setting it into that normalized scale. Um, all of that said, I hope you've enjoyed section one. If you, again, if you've enjoyed this project, make sure to hit the like button down below. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon so you know when the next video is out. And that will be our inventory section for, uh, sec sorry, inventory uh, prep for section two, which is our inventory system. And if you want access to this project, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers get instant access to the project and get private lessons. 
In addition, Patreon supporters at other tiers can get access to the project once the YouTube series is completed. The series has been brought to you by Patreon supporters like Rian, Haynes, and Quad Manson. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in Section 2, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.